Welcome everyone. I am Lakshya Khurana and I will describe an in silico framework for benchmarking of optogenetic hearing restoration. I would like to start by thanking Professor Tobias Moser and Dr. Lukas Shiflonsky for their support and supervision. I would also like to thank everyone who contributed to this project and the members of the Institute for Auditory Neuroscience. Let's begin with cochlear implants. Cochlear implants are the most successful neuroprosthetic devices and have partially restored hearing in about a million users worldwide. However, they have a critical limitation. The electrical current has a wide spread which limits the number of perceptually different channels to about 10. This leads to poor understanding of speech in noisy environments and limited appreciation of music. A solution to this problem is to use optogenetics, which uses light for stimulation, as light can be better confined in space. This promises improved spectral selectivity, hence a greater number of spectral channels in the implant. There have been several preclinical proof-of-concept studies to show the potential of such optogenetic stimulation. Here are the results from such a study showing recordings from the inferior colliculars of jaw bills in response to acoustic, optical and electrical stimulation. The point to note here is that the spread of activity with optical stimulation is much narrower than that of electrical stimulation. Today I am presenting a computational framework to assess this optical stimulation in a human cochlea model. We took a dataset of 40 audio files and implemented a sound coding strategy. It is the N of M strategy, which is a generic form of the strategies used in state-of-the-art clinical cochlear implants. We combine this with an optical 3D ray tracing model of a human cochlea to investigate how the light travels and spreads inside the cochlea. We also created a neuron model responsive to both current and light alongside a similarity index to compare the spiking pattern of the neurons to the spectrogram of the input sound. Due to the time limitation, I will only very briefly describe some most important aspects of this framework. Overall, this framework enables us to answer how well is the information transferred from sound to the neurons and how do the optogenetic cochlear implants compare to the traditional electrical cochlear implants. I will now move to the model of spectral spread, for which we obtained micro CT scanned images of a human cochlea and reconstructed the 3D structures of the scalar, a dummy silicon implant and the Rosenthal's canal. The Rosenthal's canal is the location of the somata of spiral ganglion neurons. We imported these 3D structures in a software called Trace Pro and placed 10 light emitters at the center of the implant. During the simulation, light rays are projected from these emitters towards the Rosenthal's canal and we investigate how much light reaches at the center line of the Rosenthal's canal. We simulated this for three different light sources, one with Lambertian profile similar to that of LEDs and two light sources with Gaussian profiles similar to that of waveguides with two different numerical apertures 0.5 and 0.17. For all the three light profiles, the spectral spread was significantly lower than the current spread. These current spread values were obtained from a 2018 study where the spatial spread values were estimated using electrical field imaging with 14 human cochlear implant users. Using the optical model, we also investigated several factors which can impact the irradiance at the neurons. These factors are the distance of the emitters from the neurons, the orientation of the emitters towards the neurons, and the formation of scar tissue. The methods and the results of this optical model are described in detail in our 2022 publication. Next module in the framework is the neuron model. In the model, we included multiple voltage-gated ion channels to create a Hodgkin-Huxley model with Markov kinetics formalism. In addition, we added chronos, that is the opsin for optical activation. These opsins are light sensitive proteins that are transduced in the neurons to enable optical stimulation. The Markov chain models of the ion channels were parameterized using patch clamp recordings. 
Finally, a similarity index was implemented, which we call Sound to Neuron Information Transmission Index or SNITI. This is based on SSIM, the Structural Similarity Index measure, which has been used in literature to compare different neurograms. We implemented SNITI to compare the output of the neurons with the spectrogram of the input sound. This score is 0.5 when there are no spikes from the neurons and it increases towards 1 when there is more similarity to the original sound and decreases towards 0 when there is more noise. Now I will show the first results from this framework. We implemented total 20 channels for electrical stimulation and 64 channels for optical stimulation. We increased the stimulation rate for electrical stimulation up to 900 pulses per second which is approximately the stimulation rate used in clinical cochlear implants. We observed the saturation of similarity score around 500 pulses per second. This corresponds to the range where maximum intelligibility is achieved by most of the cochlear implant users. For optical stimulation, the maximum score was achieved at 150 pulses per second, after which it started to drop. This is a result of low spike probability at higher pulse rates for optical stimulation with the chronos and our model also follows these spike probabilities. There are ongoing efforts for the development of options that can result in sustained responses at higher pulse rates. We simulated such an option by adding a leaky integrated fire model for optical stimulation which can provide sustained responses at 300 pulses per second. With this, the similarity scores for optical activation at 300 pulses per second are significantly higher than the scores achieved with electrical stimulation. A major advantage of optical stimulation is expected for speech understanding in noisy environments. Therefore, we investigated this by changing the signal to noise ratio from plus 20 decibels to minus 20 decibels. We observed that the scores for electrical stimulation decreased twice as fast as the scores for optical stimulation, predicting a lower impact of noise for optical stimulation. In conclusion, we present a framework which can help us in optimizing sound coding strategies for optogenetic stimulation and in predicting the intelligibility of future optical cochlear implant users. The framework models predicted that the optical cochlear implants would provide improved spectral selectivity and would have lower impact of noise on speech understanding. It was also predicted that the improved spectral resolution of optogenetic cochlear implants would offset its lower stimulation rate. Nevertheless, there is a need for improved options and implant technology. And the framework itself has certain limitations related to approximations and generalization. Essentially, all models are wrong, but some are useful. I am happy to get your feedback on the usefulness of the pre presented framework.